If you prefer to take communion um, on your tongue, please indicate that to Mrs. Johnson and I. We will put you at the end of the line like they do at the um, weekend masses. And once again, if you are non-Catholic and are receiving a blessing, as we always do, if you would cross your arms in front of you so that the priests are aware of it. So, thank you. Good morning. Born into a poor Italian farm family from a young age, Francesco Forgioni desired to be a friar. When he was 16, he entered the novitiate Capuchin order and took the name Brother Pius. He was ordained to priesthood in 1910. He spent many hours every day hearing confessions. He described himself as a poor brother who prays. Prayer is the greatest weapon we have, he said. It is a key to open the heart of God. At this feast of love, the Eucharist, we gather in love to celebrate the love God has for us. We pray that we may grow in love of God and others. In communion, in communion, we receive the grace to be more like Jesus in showing forth the love of the Father for everyone. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Well, my brothers and sisters, students and teachers, others gathered for this liturgy, we remember this holy man, this, this priest who, who lived in Italy. You heard that in the introduction. And there would be some people alive today who probably who would have known him because he died in 1968, not that long ago. And he was canonized, he was made a saint in 2002, not that long ago, uh, by uh, St. Pope John Paul II. So we remember this holy man in our liturgy. Let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to new life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are light for those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who by a singular grace gave the priest St. Pius a share in the cross of your Son, and by means of his ministry renewed the wonders of your mercy, grant that through his intercession we may be united constantly to the sufferings of Christ, and so brought happily to the glory of the resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, love is kind and patient, never jealous, boastful, proud, or rude. Love isn't selfish or quick-tempered. It doesn't keep a record of wrongs that others do. Love rejoices in the truth, but not in evil. Love is always supportive, loyal, hopeful, and trusting. Love never fails. Everyone who prophesies will stop, and unknown languages will no longer be spoken. All that we know will be forgotten. We don't know everything, and our prophecies are not complete. But what is perfect will someday appear, and what is not perfect will then disappear. When we were children, we thought and reasoned as children do. But when we grew up, we quit our childish ways. Now all we can see of God is like a cloudy picture in a mirror. Later we will see him face to face. We don't know everything, but when we will, but then we will, just as God completely understands us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The, re the response is, O oh, bless the Lord my soul. O oh, bless the Lord my soul. With all my heart I praise the Lord, and with all that I am. I praise his holy name. With all my heart I praise the Lord. I will never forget how kind he has been. O oh, bless the Lord my soul. The Lord forgives our sins, heals us when we are sick, and protects us from death. His kindness and love are a crown on our heads. O oh, bless the Lord my soul. The Lord is always kind to those who worship him, and he keeps his promises to, the, to their descendants who faithfully obey him. O oh, bless the Lord my soul. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, My little group of disciples, don't be afraid. Your father wants to give you the kingdom. Sell what you have and give the money to the poor. Make yourselves money bags that never wear, wear out. Make your treasure safe in heaven where thieves cannot steal it and moths cannot destroy it. Your heart will always be where your treasure is. The Gospel of the Lord. who is a brand new student at Our Savior School. Brand new this year at Our Savior's. Is anybody? I see one over there, okay. One over there. I have to raise my hand, not that I'm a new student, but I'm, all right, you boys, okay? I'm brand new here this year. Father Adam should have his hand up. He's brand new here this year. So, so it's kind of like, I hope you're feeling welcome in the school, those of you who raised your hand. I'm feeling welcome. Uh, here by, by all of you and the faculty, and, and so it's good to be together. Now, this is the fifth Wednesday we've had a school mass, so have you all been watching it in your classroom? So how is it different being here today? What's different about being here in the church as opposed to, to being in your classroom? What's different? You can tell me that. Mm -hmm. Nice and loud. You can have your mask off, okay, all right, what else? You get to do the reading, okay, good, good participation like that. What else is different? Nice and loud. Get to receive communion, absolutely. 
So when you're in your classroom, it's like it's just a spiritual communion. I think that prayer is posted so that if you can say that prayer and receive communion spiritually, but it's just not the same, is it? When you can come up here in a little bit and we'll receive the Eucharist right here uh, from the altar. Well, so I, so I was saying it was good, it's good for us to be together, face to face. We kind of have, we have real life FaceTime here this morning in, our, in the Eucharist. Well, we celebrate this, this holy priest who lived in the better part of the, of the 20th century. So as I was saying earlier, not all that long ago. And he heard the call to become a priest, a Capuchin, which is part of the Franciscan uh, family of priests and religious. And in 1910, when he, when he was ordained, he started to receive what was called the invisible stigmata. And then eight years later, 1918, it became visible. So the stigmata, do you know what that is? Maybe I should ask that first. I don't know if you did a little bit of study or research before Mass to understand what a stigmata was. Because this is something that, uh, he, he was popularly known as Padre Pio, or Father Pio, and he received the stigmata. Well, the stigmata is receiving the wounds of Jesus. So, when we look up at the, at the mosaic up here, you can see Jesus has his arms outstretched there, his hands open, his palms up, and you can see the nail marks there. Now, over on the cross over by the tabernacle, if you can see over there, you can see, of course, Jesus is hanging on the cross by the nails there in his hands, or it's kind of on his wrist, it looks like, in that, on that crucifix, and then the nail marks on his feet, and then on the side of Jesus, we can't really see it in the mosaic, but uh, when Jesus died, they thrust a sword in his side, and that's where blood and water flowed out. Well, so Father Pio, Padre Pio, that's what he received, the stigmata. So he started having these wounds, and they were unexplainable in his hands and his feet and his side, and they would bleed all the time. Not profusely, like he had to get a blood transfusion, but they would just seep blood. Well, that would be painful, wouldn't it? And it would be embarrassing. But that's what he had to, had to endure. And really, it was a special grace and blessing, as much as we can say suffering can be that way, because he was being conformed more and more into Jesus himself, into the suffering Christ. Well, word of this got to the Vatican. You know, the Vatican is where the Pope lives and all his advisors. And word got to them, and they were kind of suspect. They weren't sure what this is about. Maybe he's just doing something that created himself. And so, a sign of this uh, really divine gift, we could say, of his sufferings, that, that Father Peel was a very holy man. And one of the things that he did, that he had a great reputation for, was devotion to the Eucharist and hearing confessions. So people would go to him for hours a day uh, to have their sins forgiven, and they would get good counsel and spiritual advice from him. And besides that kind of spiritual healing, then he, along with some others, they opened the hospital. And I understand it's still open today. And so he had that heart for healing people in their physical ailment as well. He wanted to provide for them. So along with this kind of physical suffering that he had to endure, he showed this love of God in a very tangible way to people. And that's what we hear in that first reading today, what Paul is writing about. He says that, that love is, is patient and it's kind. So it's something that's very tangible. It's not something just to be talked about. That's okay to talk about, but we have to act that out in, in our lives. And that love that's poured into our hearts comes from Jesus here at the Eucharist. And that love that's poured out for us on the cross. So Jesus endured that great suffering for us on the cross, being crucified, laying down his life out of love to save us. So we want to live in that same kind of love. So tell me, how do you show that love at home? How do you show love at home? What's that look like? What can you tell me about that? Hmm. Yes. Say again. Doing your chores, okay, so you have some responsibilities at home. And say, okay, I gotta do my chores, but it's really an act of love, isn't it? It says it's a way that we show love for mom and dad and obedience in that way. That's that's a sign of love. What about what about helping do you have younger brothers or sisters to help them out in some way? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Nice and loud. What's that? Helping, helping the younger brother or sister do their homework. Very good. Yeah, that's an act of charity or love. I think Father uh, Padre Pio, St. Pio, he would be pleased with that. What about, hmm, this morning, have you already done something out of an act of love at home? Or maybe in the getting to school this morning? What else? Took care of your dog, some chores. Okay, good. That's a sign of love for God's creatures. Uh-huh. Help your brother get dressed. Very good answers. So in really ordinary ways, you guys are living that out, showing that love. In the classroom, when you observe the classroom rules, that's a sign of respect. That's a sign of love. Uh, helping out a classmate, doing things like that. And in so many, so many ordinary ways, that way that you show that, that love for one another. And in the bigger picture, then when you do some uh, food collections for the food pantry and things like that, that you're showing that love for the, for the community. So what a wonderful way that we show that in living our Catholic faith. And that's what St. Uh, uh, Pius, that's what he shows us today. And we gather around the Eucharistic table in that way to be strengthened by God's love and Holy Communion to be his holy people. Good. Trusting that God hears the prayers of his people, we now lift up these petitions. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church throughout the world, that it may show love for Jesus for all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For civil authorities, that they may have a heart for people who are in trouble, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For prisoners who are guilty, that they may seek forgiveness and resolve to be better, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For ourselves, that we may see Christ in people we want to ignore, look down on, or dislike, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For President Trump, whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Almighty Father, you have poured over us your love and blessing. Strengthen our hearts then that we may show that love and blessings to others. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, for to the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O oh Lord, we pray, the offerings placed on your altar in commemoration of St. Pius, so that as you brought him glory, you may, through these sacred mysteries, grant us also your pardon through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Pius you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Yes, Lord, you are holy. You are kind to us and to all. For this we thank you. We thank you above all for your Son, Jesus Christ. You sent him into this world because people had turned away from you and no longer loved each other. He opened our eyes and our hearts to understand that we are brothers and sisters and that you are Father of us all. He now brings us together to one table and asks us to do what he did Father, we ask you to bless these gifts of bread and wine and make them holy. Change them for us into the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your Son. On the night before he died for us, he had supper for the last time with his disciples. He took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to his friends, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In the same way, he took a cup of wine. He gave you thanks and handed the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Then he said to them, Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. God our Father, we remember with joy all that Jesus did to save us. In this holy sacrifice, which he gave as a gift to his church, we remember his death and resurrection. Father in heaven, accept us together with your beloved Son. He willingly died for us, but you raised him to life again. Jesus now lives with you in glory, but he is also here on earth among us. One day he will come in glory, and in his kingdom there will be no more suffering, no more tears, no more sadness. Father in heaven, you have called us to receive the body and blood of Christ at this table and to be filled with the joy of the Holy Spirit. Through this sacred meal, give us strength to please you more and more. Lord our God, remember Francis our Pope, Thomas John our Bishop, and all other bishops, Help all who follow Jesus to work for peace and to bring happiness to others. Bring us all at last, together with Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, and all the saints, to live with you and to be one with Christ forever in heaven. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Jesus.
Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You know, with a smile or a bow, you can acknowledge one another with a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
Let us pray. May partaking at the heavenly table, almighty God, confirm and increase strength from on high in all who celebrate the feast day of blessed pious, that we may persevere in integrity, preserve in integrity the gift of faith 
and walk in the path of salvation you trace for us through Christ our Lord. Well, thanks for your good participation, the introduction for the Mass, the reading, the responsorial psalm, the intercession, our music leadership here. Uh, so it's good to be together. Kind of different, isn't it? Kind of being spread out in church and, and to hear each other and to know when to sit and when to stand. So, so we're kind of getting back in the groove of things. So it's good to be here. And those who have been watching, the rest of the student body, joining us on Facebook, it's good that we have this way to, to pray together here in the middle of the week. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Go.